Hello from the beautiful town of Goyame, Goyame Chihuahua. Chihuahua. In our last video, we announced our plan to begin our travel through Mexico as we journey south over the next two years towards Antarctica. The first stop to start off this epic journey is the small town of Goyame Chihuahua. How do we decide to start in this town that not many people have even heard of? The town of Goyame is rooted in tradition and has hundreds of people returning yearly for their annual Fiesta Patronales Nuestra Señora del Pilar that is celebrated with a week-long calendar of events every October. Javier's roots run deep in this town where his grandparents lived when they were younger, met, and then got married in 1954. Every year his family makes a trip down to celebrate and reconnect with family as many other families return to do the same. For such a small town, there is plenty of pride and love for their community and we will be taking part in three days worth of events, reconnecting with family and showing you the beauty of this town and why it has so many people coming back every year. I think they planned that so they were like, oh, let's not interrupt their video. This town is so great, guys. You're going to fall in love with it. So aside from doing some of the activities that they have planned for us, we are going to do some stuff on our own uh, in the surrounding areas just to give you a better idea of all Goyama has to offer. So we're super excited to share that with you guys. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our day. We got in a little late, already had some lunch, checked into our hotel. We're staying at the Goyama Inn, which is the only hotel in this area. So if you are planning to come visit, especially for this festival, it gets booked really early. So make sure you book it in advance. So like we said, we got tons of things planned and we got to go. Let's go. From Koyame, we drove about 40 minutes east towards Ohinaga to one of the most impressive viewpoints in the region, Canyon de Peguis or Peguis Canyon. You'll reach a parking lot where you can leave your car and make your way down some stairs to the viewpoint. getting around my parents uber service <laughs> Mom, Dad. this uber comes with a passenger <laughs> we originally heard that you can get a canoe from the small town called el alamo it's on the way back to koyame so we thought we'd check it out the town is fairly easy to find just follow the signs to el alamo we arrived, we asked around about the canoes, but unfortunately, they don't do it from there anymore. Despite the small letdown, we were pleasantly surprised with this tiny town. It had one of the most memorable landscapes. freshened up and we have our drinks in our hand and we are ready for the rest of the evening. So basically right up front is the plaza and every night this week they're having a little festival slash it's like carnival. A mini carnival, yeah. Yeah, we'd say a kermes or festival. So they literally have right set up tons of booths with lots yeah, of food. Lots of food. Which is what we're most excited for. And then of course every night they have a baile, which is yeah. dance and we will take you to that as well. Yeah, yeah. can't wait. We're gonna go ahead and take our drinks and our festive spirits and make our way outside, probably look for some food first, which I'm so excited for. Yeah. And then we're gonna go ahead and sit down, make ourselves comfortable and get in the baile mood. Makes sense. I'd probably lose the hat. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna walk around with this. So we'll see you guys outside.
most importantly, we're gonna take you on a little tour around the plaza so we can have a look at the different kind of foods they're offering here. I already saw a couple things that were that I'm excited to have. Um, so let's go ahead and grab some food and just enjoy the rest of this. Yeah, so let's go ahead and grab some rum. If you can hear me, you know? Okay, let's go. Tons of fun out there. Great food, great music, great environment. But we're doing it all again tomorrow. So we're calling it an early night today because we have an early morning plan tomorrow. We're trying to catch a sunrise and then we have a full day of activities planned. So we're gonna go ahead and call it a night now, but we'll see you in the morning, guys. Good, Good morning. morning. So it's very early in the morning but we are trying to catch a sunrise we spoke to our hotel host and she said that there's this really nice hill that you can climb up some stairs um, and there's this really good view of the city so town <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and try to catch a sunrise from up there at that viewpoint and yeah. hopefully you can see how nice quaint peaceful and cute this little town is yeah it's uh, 6 23 a.m. so it's actually for a sunrise it's not that early so yeah. that's a good thing we got super excited when yeah. we checked what time sunrise was we're like seven o'clock shut your mouth <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we're gonna go ahead and put a fast walk on so we can try to get there before the sun rises yeah not at sunrise before see you up there see you at the top <laughs> Yeah, I think they're on this side. I think they're over here. So I think we took a wrong turn somewhere. We failed. Yeah, there's the there's the hill up there that we're supposed to go to, and there's supposed to be stairs, but we can't find them. So we're just gonna go back to the start of the hill and try to look for stairs on the other side. Which sucks because we literally just walked to the opposite side of the mountain. Hill, whatever it is. And we're missing sunrise from up there. <laughs> oh my god! How did we miss that, guys? Okay, mind you. It's covered with shrubbery and you kind of just need to find a little path, so we totally missed it. But it looks like it's a direct cut up, up the hill, so let's not waste any time. We 
made it. <laughs> uh, kind of uh, late, <laughs> but we're here at the summit. Technically, it's... technically, the sun hasn't even yeah, shown up yet. So. It hasn't shown yet, but the sky is fully lit up. It's so pretty up here, guys. The desert's so pretty. I used to hate the fact that we lived in a desert and it was always so dry, but it's actually really beautiful. So we're just gonna go ahead and enjoy these views and hopefully you guys enjoy them too. Totally epic sunrise over that mountain, seriously, so beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and make our way back down this very long hike. Oh, just kidding, it's literally like a three minute walk up that incline. So it's totally doable, definitely worth the panoramic views. Um, yeah, but let's go ahead and get a coffee, breakfast, and get the rest of our day started, which should be very fun because we looked at the itinerary and I'm not even gonna tell you yet, but let's go ahead and make our way down the mountain and we'll see you guys with a cup of coffee. Cheers. Got our coffee, got our breakfast. Breakfast with family is the best. Uh, we're gonna just get ready and then get our day started. All right guys, so we are getting to the most, for me, impressionable and memorable part of this entire celebration, which is- uh, Watch out for the poop. Oh goodness. <laughs> You watch out! <laughs> we are on our way to the Calle Jornada, which is actually a procession through the town. So literally, think parade with all these people, but you're part of it, and you're walking through the town, drinking a beverage. They pass out cups of this sotol drink, and you walk through the town celebrating this festival. Yeah, we actually were here three years ago, for their like 300th anniversary. So it was massive. Yeah, and that's definitely something we will never forget. And we hope we can show you the same experience right now. You guys, so the party's about to get started. They just started blasting the music. They are lighting their smoke bombs and we have our sotol right here. Um, if I am correct, they mix it with squirts. Soda, squirt soda and sotol. Throw pieces of orange and lime in there. And we're good. I did, I'm gonna try it. Ooh, it's strong. It tastes like tequila with a little kick. It's good. It's pretty good actually. Squirt and sotol, guys. Cheers. <laughs> Things got pretty crazy. Yeah, so just think of that. You're literally drinking sotol drinks. So think tequila, a tequila drink, walking around the town. And yeah, people get pretty drunk. But you're having a great time and it's all about just like talking to each other. Dancing. Dancing, yeah, taking in the music. It's part of the culture, so it's like 
something that you get to do what once a year when you come together at a festival like that really great environment so now we're transitioning into our next thing of the evening which is a rodeo a rodeo the environment here is super cool you just back your truck into a fence and just watch just watch the rodeo we're just gonna enjoy our drinks chill and enjoy the rodeo cheers guys cheers <laughs> We checked off another item on our list of things to do during the festival. We were at the rodeo with Javier's family. We just got back and now we get to go join the party. We're gonna make our way down to the baile, have some drinks, enjoy some family time, and maybe do a little dancing. And we'll see you guys in the morning. So, the best way to start your day is definitely with a clamato. Um, great hangover cure, but we're not feeling too bad anyways. But we always love a good clamato. Um, we did have plans to make it out to San Pedro. Um, it's a river that's supposed to be really beautiful, but it's rainy outside. So that kind of dampened our plans. So we're gonna go ahead and hang around for our next activity, which is a Sotol distillery tour. tour. We're actually going with a friend of Javier's father. Um, he's gonna show us around the distillery here. So hopefully the rain doesn't ruin our day. But if not, we have our clamatos and our beers and you know, we're always happy with those options. <laughs> so we will see you guys hopefully drinking Sotol in a couple of minutes. Cheers. Um, guía de tour, ¿sí? <laughs> guía turístico. <laughs> Ahí está. Me llamo Alonso Juárez. Oh, Hola gracias. Alonso, gracias por ayudarnos hoy. <laughs> All right guys, so we are on our way to the Vinata slash distillery. Um, so we're gonna go learn about Sotón. So again, Tequila's little cousin, Sotón. <laughs> so we're on our way there now. We're gonna get a tour of the facility and maybe we can try some. But if not, we're gonna learn about Sotón, which is super interesting because I actually really enjoy it. So let's go learn about some Sotón. Una, dos, tres. through the process super fast. Um, they basically do two different types of sotol here. They do the ahumada, which is smoked, has a smoky flavor to it. And that's what they do here in these pits here. We have some cement pits. Originally, when he first started here, they used to do it in a massive pit over there, but he managed to, I guess, reduce the amount of firewood used. So basically, here's a pit. You throw some firewood, which is actually the wood right over here. He explained which one burns better and all of that behind it. Wood, some stones, you throw 50 sotol heads, which is the plant, which we learned is actually not even agave, not even related to agave, what the tequila is made out of. It's like a combination of a pumpkin and an onion. So it's a really interesting plant that they use. Um, each pit uses 50 heads and then they cover it with some palms a tarp and then some really fine sand to make sure no air escapes or gets in. So that's the first step. 
The other option that we have is right behind me. This is a big tank that they just put all the heads in. So this one takes 50 heads and they fill it with water, the heads, and then they just close it. So very simple process. This one only takes 30 hours to complete the first, I guess, a steaming process. And that over there takes three days. So this one does uh, go a little faster. So this is actually the plant. And he said that some of the ones he farms or he buys can get up to 40 pounds. After they finish the first process, they take it over here to this grinder. Okay, so basically they throw this in here and then this motor grinds it and it comes out as this. So you got some mulch here and basically this is what you use to ferment. And then they take it inside and that's where the actual fermentation process begins. Okay, so basically they have the mulch, the ground sotol plant, toss them in here with some water. So basically it evaporates and all the condensation collects into these tanks. He collects four of these tanks before he does the process again. First time, it has an alcohol content of, a, of about eight to 12%, he said. After he collects the four other barrels, he does the process again, and that's when the alcohol contact really shoots up. And right now, this one's actually sitting at about 68% alcohol content. This one is already actually ready to go. Um, this is 54%. 54, 55% and he actually gave us a bottle. Enrique, thank you so much for the tour and for the bottle. We're, I'm gonna say we're gonna help drink this very slowly. Hey, <laughs> you just put some squirt in that? Really good. It's actually bomb. Squirt, maybe throw some sliced oranges. It's actually really good. We had that yesterday during our Calle Conada. It was really good. All right guys, so it is a long process. But um, he just kind of ran through really quickly with us. Thank you so much, um, Enrique, for giving us a little tour. But yeah, guys, Sotol Caravantes. Good stuff. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here because it's pouring and I'm just standing in the rain. Well, we're gonna go ahead and say goodbye to Sotol Cervantes and thank you very much, Enrique. And we'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, let's go. So our plants didn't go exactly as planned today. The rain kind of dampened our plants like soaked them because it was such a <laughs> heavy rainfall today. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so He's got the dad jokes now. Okay. <laughs> Not even a dad, their mom jokes too. Okay. <laughs> today we were supposed to um, go to some horse races, go check out a town called San Pedro to check out a river, but it happens, it rains. Sometimes that's what it's all about, right? You don't actually end up doing what you plan, but it's all about the journey. One more thing that we do want to do before we close out our Koyama video is give you a tour of the hotel we're staying in. So we'll do that tomorrow morning. So for now, we're going to go ahead and enjoy some drinks and play some cards and just kind of relax for the rest of the evening. And we'll see you guys in the morning. See you in the morning. So just to walk you through really quickly, um, when you first walk in, you're greeted by a super friendly staff. Um, Arlen is wonderful here. Uh, and you have this massive seating area that you can just kind of relax, hang out, play some cards, drink some coffee, watch TV. Um, and then let me take you into the room. As far as rooms go, you have plenty of options. You can select from a queen bed, a king bed, a two double bed bedroom, or even a suite which fits up to seven people. So whether you're traveling as an individual, couple, family, it doesn't matter. You have plenty of options. You're gonna get a nice, spacious, clean room to rest your head in this very lovely little town of Koyami. There's also a terrace on the upper deck where people host parties, get-togethers, there's a disco, music, tons of fun. This hotel actually offers a lot. So if you're looking for a place to stay, this is basically your only option, but it's a good one. So our time in Koyama has sadly come to an end, but we're not that sad because we know for sure we'll be back. For sure. My parents are actually gonna drop us off in Chihuahua, which will start the next leg of our adventure. So definitely follow along because we have tons of Mexico videos coming your way. So once again, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Hit subscribe. And hit the bell in the corner so you can get notifications every time we post. So we'll see you in the next one. Bye Later, Koyame. Koyame. <laughs>